Hey y'all! Welcome to Adaptation, the ultimate vlog for film adaptations and the original material they're based on. I'm Jennifer Dick, and today, my viewers, we are traveling the world and shaking things up a little bit. You see, a lot of the adaptations that we end up covering tend to be based on English source materials, as in the original material that the adaptation is based on was written in English. Not necessarily that it took place in England, though to be honest, a fair few of our favorites do that as well. And really the reason for this is simple. We, as in the adaptation hosts, all speak English, so it's easy for us to access and read those source materials. But there are so many amazing stories that are written in languages other than English. Stories whose genius have already been recognized and translated on screen as well. And we wanted to touch on at least a couple of those adaptations today. Now first up is one that we certainly can't call an unknown. The BBC's 2016 miniseries of War and Peace, based on the Russian novel by Leo Tolstoy. War and Peace is a central work of world literature, and is regarded as one of Tolstoy's finest literary achievements. And the 2016 adaptation with Lily James is accurate to the source material while keeping viewers engrossed as well. In fact, it was named one of the greatest TV costume dramas of the last decade. Next on the list is yet another one that has seen multiple adaptations in its time. Les Miserables, verse written in French by Victor Hugo. And no, I'm not talking about the musical version here. The version that's made our list is the 1998 film starring Liam Neeson and Jeffrey Rush. Now this one does have its faults. Uma Thurman as Fantine comes to my mind. But I mean Liam Neeson. Need I say more? And then moving into more modern day adaptations, we have Stieg Larsson's The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And yes, that is the translated title, because I don't think anyone wants me to try saying it in Swedish. I'd probably end up accidentally offending someone. This psychological thriller has already been adapted several times, but it's the 2009 Swedish version of the film that's made our list. Why, you may ask? For being, as Jess so eloquently puts it, disturbingly accurate to the source material. And with this book, disturbing is really the best compliment you could give it. So now traveling back to France with the film Un long dimanche de fiancée. This film was based on the novel by Sebastian Japrizot and tells the story of a woman's relentless search for her fiancé after his reported death in World War I. And just like the book, the 2004 film ticks a lot of boxes. A bit mystery, a bit romance, a bit war epic, and it does have those few humorous moments as well. Definitely worth a watch. And you know what else is worth a watch? Try Mulan. Now I'm not talking about Disney's Mulan here, though that movie is one of my favorites. I mean the live-action Chinese movie Mulan Rise of a Warrior, released in 2009. This movie, as well as its animated predecessor, is based on the Ballad of Mulan, which is about a legendary woman warrior who took her father's place in the army. Now the lack of great detail in the original poem means that any adaptations about it inevitably have some wiggle room. And they do wiggle with this one right into my heart. And for our last two favorite foreign adaptations, we actually did go animated. Firstly, there's the television show Morabito, Guardian of the Spirit. Now you will notice that this is the first and last anime on our list. The reason for this is that we did restrict our host from naming any anime that's originally based on manga, with the argument being that there are way too many many good ones to name. It can be a topic in and of itself, and it probably will be. However, we have let this one slide through because it's not actually based on a manga. The anime is based on the first book in a series of Japanese fantasy novels written by Nohoko Uahashi. Now I do admit that this series takes its liberties. It's a lot longer for one thing, and the ending is significantly different. But you know what? It's still so much fun to watch. And then last but not least is the TV adaptation of Witch, based on the Italian comic book series of the same name. The comics have run in over 65 countries, have over a hundred and 15 different issues, not to mention a two season long animated television show that is still one of my favorite series to date. It's just so darn endearing! If anyone agrees with me, meow three times. Meow meow meow. Now we have come to the end of our list, but I know this is not all there is. Please, I am begging you, if you have any recommendations for adaptations that we should add to our list, don't be shy. Let us know in the comments. They're also open for your feedback on our choices here, or even if you just want to say hello. Don't forget that we also have a podcast you can listen to on iTunes, and another vlog should be coming out in just a few weeks. Until then, if you are excited about our list, meow three times.